Okay, so if you're joining me again, we've been talking about that FNS revolution. Of course, the first piece we talked about was the fossil record, right? Fossil record. Second piece we talked about was homology. Homolog homologous anatomy, I guess, would be the term. Homologous anatomy, as well as vestigial structures and things like that. But we're, we're looking at it from an anatomical perspective. Okay. Our third little piece of evidence, and this is kind of the most important one today, is molecular. Molecular evidence, right? Back in Darwin's time, didn't, he didn't have the ability to kind of uh, parse it out and look at an animal's DNA and actual code and proteins that actually make up everything they are. Uh, well, we do. We humans do. So I'm going to go into um, this on this tree I've drawn over here because we have a comparison of different types of DNA, and I want to maybe make this tree based on this. This is a, a, actually an amino acid comparison of cytochrome C. This is a highly conserved protein. It is, uh, operates in the electron transport chain, which is something you might not know yet, but it's very important in cellular respiration. Uh, cytochrome C is very important for cell respiration, which occurs, as you might know, mitochondria. Um, cytochrome C, very, very important. Um, therefore, it's highly conserved amongst related species. If you look here, the chimp, chimpanzee, and humans, we share 100% of this, this sequence, right? Our protein is basically a sequence of amino acids, which, you know, way, you know form these complex structures called proteins. Typically, they have a lot of loops and a lot of sheets and things like that. But this is, uh, this is we can call this cytochrome C. Now, is this really what it looks like? Probably. But for our intents and purposes, let's just, let's put a picture with it right here. Uh, chimpanzees and humans share 100% of amino acids in the exact same order. So it's exactly the same. Um, you could say that we are extremely closely related, humans and chimps. You can see that because it's everything that's in green up here is similar to human amino acid sequence. Of course, remember that what goes for uh, proteins, DNA, goes for proteins, right? We're looking at proteins, which are made of amino acids. We'll talk more about this later on in the semester. But for now, know that the chimp is the most closely related to the human in this cytochrome C comparison. Let's look at the next one. The, the rhesus monkey here only has one difference, one difference between, uh, between the chimp and human protein uh, in itself, right? You can see there's one difference right over here, right, that T. Um, so we would say that the rhesus monkey is a little bit less uh, related to us, right? The rhesus monkey over here. Um, because there's, a, a, there's an amino acid difference. Let's go further down this chart here and look at something a little bit less related. Let's take a look at the uh, whale. Let's look at the whale. I think this is an interesting one. So we've looked at the chip, the rhesus. Let's look at the whale. Whale has got, let's see how many differences there is. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten differences, right? So that's even less related. So that common ancestor for the whale must have been way earlier. So the whale is going to be somewhere out here. Um, okay, let's take a look at this uh, tuna fish over here. Let's take a look at the tuna fish. Tuna fish, as you can see, has 21 differences. So we could probably put the tuna out here. Less related to everything, right? This is called our outgroup. Or out group. We'll talk more about phylogeny in a little bit. But I just want to show you that you can use things like a comparison of amino acid sequence to actually draw a phylogenetic tree. Of course, I didn't include all these ones because I was very selective. But you can see that humans and chimps would be most related because our protein is exactly the same. Rhesus monkey is very closely related because the protein only differs by one amino acid. Whale is less closely related, but it's more closely related to us. If you'll notice, this whale is more closely related to us primates over here. Right? These are all primates. Then it is to the tuna. And the least related to anything is this tuna. Not very closely related to, uh, to anything. Okay. Um, okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next piece of evolution. Right? Next piece of evolution. Uh, and it, or piece of piece of evolution, piece of evidence is what I meant to say. Uh, one of the pieces of evidence that I, I you know I think is interesting, so I like to talk about is embryology. Embryology. You guys, uh, if you'll look, these are the embryos of different organisms, and I'll just do this one very quickly. But if I was to cover up this bottom part over here, right, and not look at anything in, in levels two and levels three, 
you can see that these embryos look somewhat similar. Could you pick out, out of this bunch, if you put your hand over the screen, can you pick out which one of these is human? Is it this one? Is it this one? You can't, it's hard to really tell, right? Now, as these embryos and organisms develop, you'll start to see differences as the cell signaling within each of these organisms starts to kind of change. Uh, different proteins are sent in different places. Cells are organized slightly differently. You start to see differences here, right? You start to see differences. Um, and then, of course, by the time you have a full-blown embryo, you start to see a lot of differences, right? You can start to see how different each of these organisms is. However, this fish over here, right? It's not much difference between that and what ended up becoming a human when you look at the early embryonic phase. So, and this is just an interesting piece that kind of shows that we're all related. And finally, we're going to talk about kind of uh, what's been termed microevolution or evolution that you can see very quickly, right? We've talked a little bit about this when we talked about um, Hardy Weinberg and allele frequencies changing. Microevolution simply describes the uh, change that occurs in a species on a very uh, genetic level, right? Um, so this is kind of the classic example that's given. It, it holds true. I think it's a very illustrative example, and I think it's a good example. You have a you know, population of, the, of these bugs, right? Um, so uh, you, you spray them with pesticide, and as you know, a couple of these bugs already had mutations, right? These, red, these bugs right here, these two that have arrows pointing to, they had mutations. Now, all their friends with this green allele are going to die. These ones with this mutation that, that confers resistance, right? They are going to live on. They're going to reproduce. And soon, that allele frequency is going to change. Allele frequency changing. Right? This is kind of the, uh, I like to think of this as observable. Because this is something that you can, that scientists can see very clearly, right? This is the observable evidence of evolution. Um, and in fact, it's also testable. And it's also been performed in a lab environment. There's also experimental evidence. Experimental evidence. So I challenge you to read the Lenski paper. The Lenski paper in the scientific papers portion on Schoology. Read this paper um, and summarize it for me in a, a couple paragraphs. Go ahead and turn it in to me and I'll give you some extra points or something like that. But this is experimental evidence of evolution. So, and I think it's a very interesting experiment. This, this, this is an ongoing long-term experiment with E. coli. But yes, if you read and summarize this experiment for me, um, and leave it on my desk, I'll give you some points on your exam. I'll give you some exam points. So uh, I'm going to leave it at here for the evidence of evolution. Um, know some of these definitions of some words that, that we've used in here. Um, these aren't a hard and fast five. These are the five I wanted to talk about. There's more evidence for evolution out there if you want to research that. And talk to me about it. I'll be more than happy to. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and leave this video. There it is. Thank you for listening.